Welcome to this exercise video. Today, we'll explore the bottling line using both mass flow conveyors and regular conveyors. This exercise is perfect for beginners and will help you learn how to simulate a bottling line. Before we start building, let's take a moment to understand the material flow. Let's get started. In the material flow, the bottling line begins with the unscrambler, where bottles are introduced into the system. From there, the bottles move to the orienter machine via a conveyor running at 0.5 meter per second. Next, the bottles follow a single lane and travel to the filler, moving at a speed of 1.25 meters per second, where they are filled. After filling, they continue to the labeler, also at 1.25 meters per second, where labels are applied. From the labeler, the bottles proceed to the capper machine at the same speed of 1.25 meters per second, where caps are placed. Then, the bottles move to the packaging area with a slower conveyor speed of 0.09 meters per second. Here, the bottles are packed and moved on to the next part of the workflow with a conveyor speed of 1 meter per second. Now we will replicate the flow with the simulation model. First, Open Flex Sim and set the time units to seconds and length units to meters, then click OK. Before building the model, I am changing the model to presentation mode, so the grid lines will not appear. Then, start the model by dragging and dropping the mass flow conveyor, and add one more conveyor. Follow how I am adding these conveyors and use join conveyors to make a new conveyor that connects to the already existing conveyor. Same as before, add some more conveyors and connect them so that the curve of the conveyor will be accurate. You can change the direction of the conveyor through the arrow in the properties window. Now, while adding the new conveyor, reduce the width size to 0.07 as this is the single line flow. Move that conveyor and connect it with the other conveyor. As we saw before in the material flow, the flow starts with the unscrambler. So to make it visually good, I am dragging and dropping a 3D shape from the fluid library, and I am changing the name to unscrambler. Near the single flow conveyor, the orienter machine will come, so I am dragging and dropping a basic shape, changing the shape to a box, and changing the name to orienter. In the single flow conveyor, we can specify how many lanes the item should flow. We can see the options in width rule. Select the number of lanes, and keep it as one. Copy and paste the conveyor if you want to use the same one again. Just follow my steps to add all the conveyors. Next, add a circle shape as we consider that to be the filler machine. Copy and paste the conveyor and connect the conveyors around that filler. Then, add more conveyors and use any one shape as a labeler and add the remaining conveyors. Now we are going to create a spiral conveyor. To add that, 
first choose the curved conveyor, and in the sweep angle and location, change the end place so you can see the elevated conveyor. Now change the sweep angle to 710, the spiral conveyor will be done. Next, add the conveyors and add 4 conveyors vertically to that. In this place, add one more 3D shape, as this is where the bottle capper will be located. Now add the conveyor with some curved conveyors and normal straight conveyors. Add three combiners, and add a normal roller conveyor for those three combiners. Then, add one vertical conveyor and connect it. Add the sink and source, and go to the flow item and add all the bottles from the flow items. Then go to the toolbox, select flow unit 1, and in the properties, in the shape items, Select the bottle shape by label and keep it as it is. In the fill order, select randomized, so the bottles will be randomly placed on top of the conveyor. Now we have to add the label for the conveyors. As shown in the table, add a label name type and put the value as mentioned in the table. From unscrambler to filler, type 1. From filler to labeler, type 2. From labeler to capper machine, type 3. After the label has been created on the conveyor, and then add one more flow unit then select the shape, and in the fill order, select length and width. Now connect the conveyor from the capper to the other conveyor, and in the conversion scale, select the two flow units we have created. In the packaging area, make a connection between the source and combiners, and choose the flow item as tote. Change the inter-arrival time, then make a connection between the mass flow conveyor and the combiner, and select round robin. Then, change the visualization of the roller conveyor to a belt conveyor. In the properties of the combiner, change the target quantity and processing time. So we have added the conveyors, configured the machines and conveyors. Now we have to set the conveyor speed. Since only the unscrambler produces items, give it a generation speed of 10 units per second. Then, as shown in the table, set the conveyor speed as follows. From unscrambler to orienter, 0.5 meters per second. From orienter up to bottling capper, 1.25 meters per second. From there to packaging area, 0.09 meters per second. From packaging to sink, 1 meter per second. Now we have added all the logic. When we run the model, you can see the bottles randomly come from the unscrambler, change into a single line, get filled in the filler, pass through the labeler, get capped, and then go to the packaging area, where they are packed in totes and move to the next part. With this, you can have a basic understanding of how a bottling line works and how to model it using FlexSim. Thank you for watching.